الحمد لله الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له ونشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله ارسله الله تعالى الى كافه الناس بشيرا ونذيرا بين يدي الساعه من يطع الله ورسوله فقد رشد ومن يعص الله ورسوله فانه لا يضر الا نفسه ولا يضر الله شيئا اعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون وقال تعالى يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارحام ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا وقال تعالى يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما I begin in the name of Allah the most compassionate the most merciful All praise all glory all prestige and acclaim is due to Allah We praise him we glorify him we put our trace our trust and reliance in him We put our faith in him We seek his aid and assistance in everything that we do and we ask him to protect us from the evil of our sins and from the evil that lurks within us We bear witness that there is none worthy of our worship there is none worthy of our total submission and compliance except Allah and we bear witness that the prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam peace and blessings be upon him is his last and final messenger who has been sent till the end of time as a guiding beacon for the universe whoever obeys Allah and his prophet are indeed amongst the righteous and whoever disobeys Allah and his prophet only cause harm to themselves amma ba my brothers and sisters allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as has created us as human beings as i stand here i am failing to notice anyone with wings so i am assuming we are all human beings regardless of how much red bull you may consume as human beings allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created us with certain needs limitations if you may we all eventually get hungry and fulfill that need by eating we get thirsty and feel the need to hydrate ourselves and as human beings all that food and and drink must go somewhere at the end of the day we look forward to hitting the sack to refresh ourselves and energize ourselves for the next day ahead Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has not only created us with needs but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created the entire system around us to fulfill those needs as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala states in surah an-naba wa khalaqnakum azwaja he created you in pairs another need that a human being fulfills وجعلنا نومكم سباتا وجعلنا الليل لباسا وجعلنا النهار معاشا ان سوره نبا الله سبحانه وتعالى counts his blessings and the things and systems that he has put in place that allow us as human beings to unfold day after day after day and amongst one of those needs is the need 
of us as human beings to communicate and interact with one another. We are social beings. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has embedded within us, it is in our DNA that we must and we have to interact with one another. Although it may be at different levels, just like our food and drink. People eat and drink on different levels. Some eat more <clears throat> and some eat less. Some sleep more and some sleep less. Some people are introverts, very reserved and shy, but nonetheless they still need to communicate. Some people are the life of the party. And like the spotlight. Regardless of the situation, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created us with this need of interacting with one another. This is why, as I speak, Facebook has over 1.8 billion subscribers. Which is another platform, nonetheless it is a platform of interacting with one another. Of socializing with one another. And on that platform, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created us different. Just as the different levels of interaction are within us, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created all of us differently. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala addresses this. Ya ayyuha nas, inna khalaqnakum min dhakari wa untha, wa ja'alnakum shu'uban wa qaba'ila li ta'arafu. O people, we have created you from one man and woman. Our mother and father, Adam and Hawa, alayhim as -salam. And through their union, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made us into these endless tribes and nations, li ta'arafu. So that we can recognize each other. This is how it is usually translated or heard. But what does a ta'aruf mean? In our conversations, what does a ta'aruf mean? If I ask you, brother, what's your name? All right. Your name is so and so. My name is Abdurrahman. Boom. Is that a ta'aruf? Is that called an introduction? Just knowing the name or recognizing someone, that's not a ta'aruf. A ta'aruf happens when you get to know one another. When there is a conversation that happens. That is when you get to know one another. Allah has created us in different forms, shapes and sizes. Different colors, different backgrounds, different languages. Why? So that we can get to know one another. Imagine if each and every single one of you sitting in this room looked like me. Oh. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created us with our different looks. And not just the external factor, but even the internal. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created us with different personalities, different temperaments. Why? So that we can learn to live with one another. And this is what makes this world a beautiful place. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala addresses this in the Quran. وَمِنْ آيَاتِهِ خَلْقُ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ وَاخْتِلَافُ أَلْسِنَتِكُمْ وَأَلْوَانِكُمْ The fact that we come in different shapes and sizes and colors and languages and backgrounds, all of this is a reflection of the greatness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, of the creativity of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, of the power and might of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Subhanallah. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has embedded within us this need of interacting with one another. And just as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created, created us with these needs, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also gave us or sent to us prophets. And in our case, the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam, who guided us and showed us how to go about fulfilling these needs. His sunnah, his legacy teaches us how to eat, how to drink, how to interact with one another. And not only did he talk the talk, but he walked the walk. And he proved himself to be the greatest example that walked the face of this earth 
of what it is to be an exemplary person. He showed us how a husband should be to their wife, how a son should be to their parents, how a father should be to their children, and how he was a friend and a companion to his Sahaba. He also showed us how to lead, how to guide, how to show the way and go the way. This is who the Prophet wasallam was. He taught us how to interact with one another. He left behind a blueprint. And not just a blueprint, but he established a community that pivoted around what we called Masjidun Nabawi. The city of Medina. The masjid of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam didn't just come to show us how to connect with Allah, but he taught us how to connect with each other. He didn't only show us how to recognize Allah, but also how to recognize each other. Recognize each other's feelings and emotions. <coughs> and he built his masjid based on that. Indeed, the masjid serves as a platform for us to spiritually move forward and connect with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But there is a social aspect, an interactive aspect in that spiritual development. This is why we pray in jama'ah, in a gathering, in a congregation. Many of you have left your businesses or have come from home and gathered here for al-jumu'ah, the gathering. So there is a social aspect of everything that we do in Islam. And the Prophet ﷺ, through the example of his masjid, addressed how the masjid should be a platform of not just fulfilling one's spiritual state of mind, but also one's social state of mind, also one's emotional and mental state of mind. The masjid that the Prophet ﷺ left behind was a place of refuge and safety. Was a place where the Sahaba and the Sahabiyat came to seek emotional refuge. A masjid is a place where when someone comes, they should feel free of being judged, of being criticized, of being looked down upon. The masjid is not a place where someone who walks through those doors should feel afraid of being judged or nudged. The Prophet ﷺ has stated in the hadith that we are well aware of about seven types of people who will be under the shade of Allah's throne on the Day of Judgment. And one of those people is a person, رَجُلٌ قَلْبُهُ مُعَلَّقٌ بِالْمَسْجِدِ A person whose heart is attached to the masjid. How can we honestly expect a person to be emotionally attached to the masjid? If he or she is being judged, or looked down upon, or feels threatened every time they walk through the doors. The Prophet ﷺ left an example of tolerance and mercy. Once a Bedouin, an Arabi, a Bedouin is a phrase that is used for those people who are not familiar with the formalities or the etiquette of society or a masjid. Very simple, plain folk. He came to the masjid of the Prophet ﷺ while he was sitting with the Sahaba and he went and he started relieving himself. The Sahaba, they got up in an outrage to reprimand him and the Prophet ﷺ said, leave him, leave him. دعوه لا تزرمه. Leave him. The Sahaba stopped and then when he was done, the Prophet ﷺ called him. And explain to him that these masajid are not for the place of filth, but they are for the, they, this is the place of the tilawa and the dhikr and the prayer. 
And then the Prophet Wasallam diffused the situation by asking the Sahaba to cleanse the area. And that's it. He did not know any better. Now imagine if this person was reprimanded, what type of effect and impact it would have on him. And now he's leaving, loving the masjid more than ever before. The masjid should serve as a place for a positive experience, not just for us, but for our families as well. For our children as well. The strength of the walls of the masjid will not fortify the faith of our children. The tall minarets will not elevate their character. The soft carpet will not soften their hearts. The open parking lots will not open their hearts and minds. But it is the mercy and tolerance that they learn inside the masjid. The softness that they experience from one another that will make their hearts soft. The elevated character in the masjid that they experience will elevate their character. The open minds and hearts that they will feel and experience will broaden their mind and their hemisphere. It is what goes on in a masjid, that emotional refuge that a person feels that will cause the funer- that will develop our future generation into the flag bearers of Islam. Today our children may be running around in the saf. They may be playing, but tomorrow they will be in those safs. And the day after, one day they will be leading the sufuf. Children running around, playing, is not a sign of a rowdy community. It is a sign of a thriving, hustling, and bustling community. And subhanAllah, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa was so, so particular about these things. Abu Qatada radiallahu anhu reports that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, إِنِّي أَقُومُ إِنِّي لَأَقُومُ فِي الصَّلَاةِ أُرِيدُ أَنْ أُطَوِّلَ فِيهَا Sometimes I lead the prayer wanting to lengthen it. فَأَسْمَعُ بُكَأَ الصَّبِيْهِ I hear a baby crying. فَأَتَجَوَّزُ فِي صَلَاةِ فِي صَلَاةِ كَرَاهِيَةَ أَنْ أَشُقَ عَلَى أُمِّي I start wrapping up that prayer to make it easy on the mother of that child. This is the example that the Prophet ﷺ left behind of how the environment, how the experience of coming to a masjid, of congregating with one's community should be a positive experience, a welcoming experience, a humbling and heartwarming experience. And at the same time, the masjid should fulfill the educational aspect as well. Subhanallah. Many of us over here are adults, but we have another generation that's in the works. A generation that one day will be take o- taking over and representing our, our religion. And this is the place where they come to grow. The masjid is the place where our children, our families come to celebrate their identity. This is where they come to increase their knowledge, to educate themselves about what Islam is, who Muslims are and should be. The knowledge and education, the understanding of religion within our children should not be restricted to, oh, you know what, I can't eat marshmallows. Sorry, I don't eat Lucky Charms. Or you know what, I don't do pepperoni on my pizza. Their understanding of Islam should not be restricted to just these core elements. But as a community, we should be working very hard on making sure that our seeds are watered in the right way. That they are given the right amount and the correct sunshine and light. That they are protected from the external Elements and pesticides so that they can grow up with deep, strong roots and grow tall and into strong, fruit-bearing members of our religion. So they can grow up into those trees that will give shade and comfort to others. And all of these things, my brothers and sisters, the spiritual aspect of a masjid, the emotional aspect, 
the, emotionally, the emotional growth that happens in a masjid, the mental refuge, the educational outlet that a masjid can provide, the common denominator in all of these aspects is for us as a community to be together and to be united. To not allow us to see each other with the lens and with the barriers and lines that shaitan has drawn in between us. A community moves forward when they work together, not at each other. In the bigger scheme of things, the cities move forward when, they, when other communities, when we all work together instead of working at each other. There is a saying in English that if you want to go far, go alone. I'm sorry. If you want to go fast, go alone. But if you want to go far, you go together. Together as one unit, as one body. Where one person's pain is everyone's pain. Where one person's joy is everyone's celebration. My brothers and sisters, we may not have it all together, but together we have it all. أقول قولي هذا وأستغفر الله لي ولكم ولسائر المسلمين فاستغفروا إنه هو الغفور الرحيم. الحمد لله الحمد لله وحده والصلاة والسلام على من لا نبي بعده فيا عباد الله إن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار ألا لا إيمان لمن لا أمانة له ولا دين لمن لا أحد له عن أبي هريرة رضي الله عنه قال قال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم إن الله تعالى لا ينظر إلى صوركم وأجسامكم ولكن ينظر إلى قلوبكم وأعمالكم أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد بعدد من صلى وصام وصل على سيدنا محمد بعدد من قعد وقام اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد كلما ذكره الذاكرون وكلما غفل عن ذكره الغافلون وصل على جميع الأنبياء والمرسلين والملائكة المقربين وعلى أهل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين وعلى صحابته أجمعين ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين اللهم اغفر لنا وللمؤمنين والمؤمنات والمسلمين والمسلمات الأحياء منهم والأموات برحمتك يا سميع يا قريب يا مجيب الدعوات برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم أعز الإسلام والمسلمين وأذل الشرك والمشركين ودمر أعداءك أعداء الدين اللهم من أراد بالإسلام والمسلمين خيرا فوفقه إلى كل خير ومن أراد بالإسلام والمسلمين شرا فخذهم أخذ عزيز مقتدر فخذهم أخذ عزيز مقتدر آمين آمين يا رب العالمين آمين يا رب العالمين آمين يا رب العالمين إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربة وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعذكم لعلكم تذكرون فاذكروا الله تعالى يذكركم ودعوه يستجب لكم ولا ذكر الله أكبر والله يعلم ما تصنعون فاتقوه وأقيموا الصلاه